Hi, welcome. Welcome or welcome back. <laughs> if you've been hanging out with us this morning. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> yes, hi Sue. Where, where are you right now, Sue? I'm in the Maple Room at the Cameron Recreation Center in Northeast Burnaby with a live studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> so excited in 3D. Incredible. Wow, wow. <laughs> wow this is probably the biggest one yet. Well, sure, you can't see them, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome, everybody, and thanks for coming to this session. I hope you're enjoying the wellness fair so far. Um, and I'm so delighted that you're here with me. I'm the Sue McIntyre, the recreation programmer for seniors programs at Cameron Rec Center. And through the pandemic, we've been with our members on Zoom. Um, and I've been doing cooking demos on Zoom. And every time they say the only bad thing about it is they don't the samples. So I'm sorry I won't be able to reach through the Zoom screen and give you a taste at the end of this cooking session. Uh, but we do have here's here in the room with us today who will be allowed to taste it. Um, that's why I'm going to wear my mask through the demonstration because it's uh, public health order and also good safety. Um, so, uh, all right. So um, I was inspired. Oh, here come some more people. They can come in. I was inspired today to cook something that some of our members like. They were talking about how much they like to eat the egg bites at Starbucks. And if you've gone to Starbucks, they sell you these delicious little um, morsels that you can have for your breakfast or lunch or a snack. And they're quite nutritious, but they're terribly expensive. I think they're about $5 for two egg bites. And I'm a really thrifty cook. So I know you can make these egg bites for about 25 cents each with your own ingredients at home. Also, if you go on the Starbucks website, no disrespect to Starbucks, but these things have to be made in one place and carried to another. They have some ingredients to keep them nice during that whole process. You're just gonna make them in your kitchen and you're gonna eat them. So you don't have to put a lot of additives in them. You don't have to put any additives in them. Um, this is a no recipe recipe. So I haven't got the recipe written down anywhere. But as I go through, you'll see it's so simple and also so flexible that you'll be able to make these even if you can hardly remember. There are lots of egg bite recipes online, however. So you can always just Google egg bites recipe and you'll find lots of ways to make it. So I'm going to start with a muffin pan, just a 12 cupper. And I'm gonna make 12 egg bites and I'm gonna to try to make three different kinds so you can see some variety. I've got these little potatoes, which are awfully nice. And um, I've already washed them and scrubbed them. And I'm going to slice them as thinly as I can because they're going to have to cook with the eggs. Now, if you don't care for potatoes or if you don't have potatoes, other starches will work. You could put a little piece of bread in instead because this is going to go at the bottom of the, of the muffin pan. Or if you prefer rice or quinoa, you could put some of that in. Um, you just want something a bit starchy because it gives it some body and it also soaks up the extra moisture if the eggs weep a little bit so that it's not drippy and sloppy. But whatever your carb of choice is, you can use just a little bit there. That's flexibility number one. So I'm being very careful because it's not a good thing to cut your finger with a knife while you're doing it. <laughs> All right, I've got my um, compost roll me throwing stuff in here. This is a chefy tip. Have a bowl to cook, put all your ends in. It keeps your cooking surface tidy. And then you only have to take one thing to the compost rather than running with little bits and bobs. Okay, I've got my potatoes really thinly sliced, like almost paper thin. If you have a mandolin, you could use that. I'm also going to prepare all my other toppings and then I'll make the egg and then I'll put it in the oven. And the oven is oven still on, 350. I turned it on, but I want to make sure. Got a red onion here, and I'm just going to give it a chop into the tiniest little pieces. And it no way use a whole red onion. I'm going to take a sliver of the red onion, and I've cut it this way. And then I'm just going to chop it into like confetti. So now I have a pile of red onion. Now I'm going to use my bench scraper to move things around on my cutting board. 
this is a great thing to have. They make them out of metal. They make them out of plastic. It's thin and has a thin edge, and it saves you moving things around on your cutting board with this um, with your knife. You can take all the sharpness off your knife by moving things around on your cutting board. But if you want something out of the way, you can use your bench scraper. Okay, what else am I going to cut up? I'm going to cut up some spinach. I'm going to make piles of all the add-ins, and then they're ready to go. I'm going to make my egg mixture. So I'm just going to put the spinach on the cutting board and chop, chop, chop in a couple of directions. The other way, instead of moving the food, I'm moving myself around. That's just the way I do it. I haven't stood on my head yet to cut anything. Just wait, I'll figure it out. All right, nice pile of spinach. And it looks like a lot of spinach. Probably it's like a quarter cup, but spinach um, collapses when it's cooked, so it'll be it'll turn out to be less spinach. I have a lovely uh, orange pepper, a bell pepper. And I'm going to take some of that too. This is the kind of thing that you can make with whatever's in your fridge left over. You can use leftover proteins, leftover veggies, whatever you've got. And I'm going to cut it into confetti as well. Okay. So I want to chop up. Oh, if you like onions, I'm going to cut up a green onion too. These are washed. I washed everything before I came here. Get out the way. Because one of these varieties of egg cups is going to be my two onions and a spicy pepper. See if anybody dares to taste that one. Yeah, two kinds of onions and a spicy pepper. All right, so I've got a little assortment of things that are gonna go inside my egg bites here. I'm just gonna set that over here. And I'm trying to think, oh, I need to cut up some ham. You could use bacon, you could use ham, you could use no meat at all. Um, you could use leftover chicken, you could use tofu. Um, it's just another thing that you can add to your egg bites, but I know some people like proteiny stuff. Um, however, these have protein from the eggs and from the um, cottage cheese and cheese, you'll see. I'm just gonna cut the ham into, guess what, confetti. That's the top on everything. I just used a couple of slices of ham here, and I chose the one from the store that has fewer additives, although, any processed meat is kind of a treat food. You wouldn't eat it all the time. But we'll put a very small amount in our egg bites. And then on the side, I also have some cheddar cheese and a little bit of mozzarella cheese. So that, that, this is all ready to make delicious stuffing for our egg bites. And if I have time, I'll make a little salad on the side. All right, um, the egg part. I mix it up in my blender. So I'm, now you get to see me crack a bunch of eggs. And I'm going to bring my compost bowl close. I tried this at home last night, and I used a dozen eggs, and I have more than I needed for 12 egg bites. So I'm going to try eight eggs today. Let's see. What that means is for if you're making a whole muffin pan of them, you're going to need less than one egg per cup. And if you're scaling the recipe down and you only want to make two, you maybe want one egg or two eggs and make three, something like that. The good thing is they freeze. So if you're making your egg bites and um, you've got lots and you don't want to eat them all at once, you can put them in a plastic container in the freezer and then just bring them out and warm them in the microwave and they're ready to eat. I'm not counting, I'm just looking at how many are left. <laughs> all right, there we go. There must be eight eggs in my blender because there's four left in my box. <laughs> All right, so we've got eggs in there. The other thing I like to put in there, hold on a sec. My eggy fingers is cottage cheese. This is 1% cottage cheese, so it's low fat. Um, 
but it's a great source of protein and also calcium. Um, I'm conscious of bone loss, so I try to add calcium to everything I can. So very carefully measure about a half cup of cottage cheese in there. Don't measure it, just scoop it in. It's not gonna make too much of a difference in what you put. So inside my blender jar, I have eight eggs. I've got a couple of dunks of cottage cheese. I've got a little bit of pepper. Bit. And if you like other seasoning, this is where you could add herbs, spices, anything you like. I'm just going classic. A little bit of salt, not too much. I'm going to put my blender lid on and I'm going to blenderize it. Cover your ears. That should do. So now we have an eggy soup in the blender and it's time to get the muffin pan. Now it needs to be greased or the egg bites will stick because egg is one of the stickiest substances known. I'm just gonna use my cooking spray because it's quick. If you prefer to use butter or margarine or even some oil with a brush or a, a paper towel, whatever way, but put plenty of lubrication on the pan there. Hey, hey, Sue, I think we've got a question. I oh, saw sure. a raised hand. Uh, um, feel free to I, unmute. Oh, if, if are you, do you have a spare moment to, to take yeah, one? I'm, I'm gonna put the potato slices in the bottom of the pan and I'll answer the question. <laughs> sure. Great. Let's hear it. Yeah, feel free to un, unmute yourself. While we get unmuted, I've got a potato slice in each pan bottom and I'm gonna pour the egg into each of the cups and then I'm going to start putting the um, toppings into them. So please, if you have a question, let's hear it. Uh, it's a great time to chat. I understand we'll also have some oven time later for questions too, if, it, yeah. if you're not I ready right now. Okay. So I'm just very carefully pouring this eggy mixture in to the cups. I'm leaving a little room on top because I'm gonna add some other ingredients. So I'm not filling it right up to the top of each muffin cup. I suppose if you like to use muffin cup liners, you could here, but um, that's just one more thing for it to stick to. So, and it works pretty well if you just give it a good spray or grease. Okay, I'm not gonna tip it, but trust me, 12 of those cups have egg stuff in them. And I'm gonna do three, uh, four of each. So let's do the spinach ones. One, I'm just sprinkling some spinach on top. You don't have to mix it in or anything. So it's a potato slice first, then you pour in the egg goo, and then sprinkle on some spinach. What goes with spinach? Um, we're gonna put the orange pepper in with the spinach. Those two colors are so pretty. All right, so we've got orange pepper and spinach, and that was the one that I wanted to put with the mozzarella cheese, which is here. I brought the mozzarella in a small container because I have a huge bag of it in my freezer at home for making pizza. You could even just put a slice of cheese on top of each one. It doesn't have to be so fancy to be grated because it's going to melt into the egg anyways. Or if you're making all one kind, you could even throw your cheese into the blender and pulverize it along with the egg and the cottage cheese. Okay, so for the four, I put spinach, bell pepper, and some mozzarella cheese on top. The next four, let's get into the ham ones. I've got that ham that I've confettied. I'm going to put it into four. And you can really be creative. Put anything in that you would like to eat with eggs or anything in that you've never eaten with eggs that you think would be good. So that's in. And with that one, I'm going to put that cheddar cheese. These will be like plain ham and cheese. 
At my house, I know who would pick these ones. The meat and potatoes guys will like these ones. All right. And the last four are the famed double onion red pepper. So I'm going to put, remember I chopped that red onion up. I'm going to put it in first into each of them. Eat these if you dare. So roasted garlic would be really, really good, but I don't have any with me today. Just another idea. I'm going to put the, that um, green onion or scallion in two that I cut up. And I just cut one for these four. You really don't need a lot of toppings. Okay, so for those ones, I've got red onion, green onion, red pepper. So these beautiful little babies are medium hot peppers that have been pickled. They're good on sandwiches, they're good on the side of a plate, but they're also good as an ingredient. They're kind of weird looking. Um, these ones are from a, a Persian store, so, but doesn't matter. I'm gonna get uh, most of the seeds out because that's where a lot of the heat is. I'm just gonna gently slice up what's left there. Uh, it's quite tangy and a little bit spicy. And I'm, so I'm just gonna put a little blob on the top of, of this beautiful red pepper. And these are gonna be the most exuberant of my eight bites. So I've got them all assembled. See if you can see them, sort of. Don't tip too far. They're gonna go into the oven. Okay, they'll take about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes in the oven, depending if you have a convection oven, they'll go quicker. You're gonna know they're done because they get quite puffy, almost alarmingly so. They start to smell delicious. And then they get kind of a little bit of golden brown just around the edge. It's not all brown all over, but all of a sudden they go from being kind of soupy in the middle to being completely cooked and you'll know. So I've got a plate of them in my refrigerator that I can tip. When they come out of the oven, you need to let them sit for about 10 minutes and separate from the, uh, the pan, but um, move my iPad. Beautiful. That's the pepper and onions one. This is the cheddar cheese and ham. And this is the spinach and mozzarella and bell pepper one. Each one, like maybe two is good for breakfast, depending on your appetite. I'm going to ask one of my assistants to put this in the microwave and warm up, and then we're going to serve it to our studio audience. Um, just um, a minute and a half, two minutes. All right, so it's oven time, so that means we have time for some questions if anybody has them. And while you're doing that, I'm going to make us a little side salad to go with it. Yeah, you have any questions from in the house? Yeah, we've got um, we got mul multiple <laughs> channels going. We got the, the real life and the Zoom. Right. I I don't know if anyone in here has questions. Because I can't read the chat from here, but I'm happy to answer any. Yeah, I will keep an eye on it oh. if anyone feels better typing their question. But feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like. And I've got Sue Hall. In with us who has a question. That's a great question. Duo's question is if you don't have a blender, can you just whisk it? Yeah, just use a hand whisk in your bowl and whisk the eggs and the cottage cheese. Yeah, whisk the eggs and the cottage cheese until now. The difference is the, the whisk won't break up the cottage cheese the way the blender blades will. So you'll have bits of cottage cheese through. You could always, if that's not pleasant to you, you could put some yogurt in instead, like some Greek yogurt. Same idea, because it's already smooth and creamy. Yeah. Um, you could even do it with a fork, if, especially if you're doing a smaller amount. Or if you have one of those um, blender immersion sticks, you could stick it in there. Yeah, do it that way. Um, I'm going to make a little tomato and cucumber salad for beside the egg bites while we talk. Is the oven doing 
always like to have something fresh along with something warm. See if I can get a couple of our studio audiences stepped out. So right now we have Suho and May in the studio audience, and we also have Stacy and Me Too. And I'm gonna ask them all to taste the egg bites. So I'm cutting these this cucumber up into um, slightly larger confetti. I think we have a thing going on here. It's about that big, like the same size as the top of your thumb. Nice little bite-sized morsels, but don't include the top of your thumb in the salad, please. Just kind of push them into a bowl. Found these really cool tomatoes at the grocery store. They are yellow and orange and red. They're just so much more colorful than a one color pack of tomatoes. Oh, we still got time. I'm done at 10 past. Yes. Yes, 10 oh. past is right. You have plenty of time. Woo! Stacy has brought the egg bites out of the fridge. Do you want to take those to our? Sure. Let me yes. show. Do you want to show them? Yeah, they're. Um, beautiful plate of egg bites warmed up in the microwave and they're so fragrant um we've got some plates and i've got, I a, I've got a spatula for you so you can and napkins yeah, thank you you want to grab some plates and maybe well. some forks <laughs> all right we'll get the studio audience's verdict on them in a minute but i'm going to get some tomatoes out now when i cut tomatoes i like to use a knife that has a bit of serration on it it just goes gently through the tomato. And these are quite small, but I'm, so I'm gonna cut them into two or four pieces, depending. So they sort of mix in with the, uh, the cucumber. The spicy one has a on it. That's the warning signal. It's not too spicy. Is it good? Very good. The studio audience is is starting to taste them. Is it better than Starbucks? Oh, better than Starbucks, they say. This is good. Okay. Okay, so I have chased my cucumber bits and my uh, tomatoes into this bowl. You can make a small amount or a large amount. I like this salad when it's really made, but you could make it ahead of time. Oh, you know, we could add a little bit of that red onion in there too. I have a question. Question from Stacy. Yes, if you want, could you do just an egg white instead of all the eggs? Oh, you, you sure could. I was waiting for someone to ask that question. <laughs> Stacy's question is, could you make it just with egg whites and not egg yolks? Some people don't eat egg yolks. Um, so if you don't prefer egg yolks, you can just use the egg whites. You can even use the instant eggs that you can get already um, prepared in a container. Because the, both the egg whites and the egg yolks will work just fine in it, however you like to eat it. All right, so I threw a little bit of onion in there. Oh my goodness, look what I have over here. This is inspired cooking. Some the food that some people love and some people do not love. Cilantro. I love it, so I'm adding it to my salad. Huh? That goes in the compost bowl. Whatever you have, just go in your fridge. And if you don't have it. Go to the garden. If the garden's still in operation, go to the store, find something. If you make a little extra, share it with your neighbor or your family member. Sharing food is a great way of connecting with people. All right, so now in the bowl I have <clears throat> tomatoes, cucumbers, cilantro, little bit of onion. Nice. I'm not gonna make a fancy dressing. I'm just gonna take one of my favorite citrus fruits, a lime. And I ran out of the house this morning and forgot to bring my citrus reamer. So I'm just putting a fork into the lime and squeezing the lime and coaxing that juice out. 
it squeezes it out yeah. like this. So I've got about a half a lime of lime juice in there. And I'm going to throw a little bit more of that. Oh, coriander. That's what I brought for this one. I have a cousin who comes from Kenya, and she taught me all the different ways you can enjoy some warm spices like coriander. So I'm just going to put like a quarter, well, a heavy quarter teaspoon of coriander into that small amount of veggies, and a little bit of salt, and again, tiniest bit. You don't want to oversalt things because they don't taste very good, and also too much salt is not healthy, but a little bit of salt teaches your tongue how to taste the flavors that are there. It's just a, a thing with cooking. A little bit of salt, if you're allowed it, can make things taste so much better. So now this is moistened with the lemon juice, seasoned with the coriander and the salt, or whatever, whatever herbs you like. And we have a nice little salad. So I'm going to show you a presentation. <laughs> Can you grab me a plate, assistant? It's been a while since we've used this kitchen. Our rec center is just and um, we're so delighted to be back in this space. I got a key. I can help you. Oh, that's a key. Yay, me too. I, just need, a, I need a side plate. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so let's plate the egg bite. We're going to put the salad on the side. And all these colors together, it's going to be like a celebration of deliciousness. And I'm going to tell you on this plate, I'm going to put, well, I'm going to pretend I'm serving for my son who's always very hungry. So I'm serving three egg bites on this plate and a bit of salad because he likes the salad, but I chose one of each. So it's like a little fiesta of colors and flavors. This whole plate costs less than $5. And it's so much more nutritious and so much more delicious and you can make it at home. You don't have to go out for it. So if you, if you love those egg bites or if you've never tried them, here's a chance to do it. I wanted to show you one more thing. Pretty well, everybody has an oven and you can do this in the toaster oven if you like. There are a couple more ways to do it. If you are an instant pot cooker, you can purchase at the cook shop or on Amazon or whatever, wherever you buy your cookware, this silicone mold and you put the same stuff in and you cook it on the steam setting in your Instant Pot. There's recipes online for how long to set your Instant Pot to cook it, but you can cook it in your Instant Pot. And then when it's done, you just pop them out. So slightly different shape from the muffin tin, but you get the same product pretty much. The other one, they, they have these at the dollar store and at London Drugs, and I thought they were a joke. This one's getting old, so it doesn't open very well. It is a microwave egg poacher. And it works amazingly well. You, just like uh, the muffin pan, you spray it and you put the egg mixture in and then it'll cook in the microwave in about a minute and a half. And so you have egg bites really fast that way. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it. I believe they're also starting to market little egg bite makers. It looks like a waffle iron and it opens up and you pour your stuff into four little cups and then you close it and it plugs into the wall and then it cooks the egg bites. But why buy another appliance and spend that money if you can cook it in your oven in the muffin pan? I'm gonna go over to our oven and see how those egg bites are doing. They're starting to smell good, right? Yes. Ten minutes, okay. I'm going to take you on a walk. I'm gonna go slowly because I know it can be disorienting to be on Zoom when the speaker is moving. And I'm gonna see, oh, I'm gonna switch my camera around so you can see what I see. Look in there, there's those egg bites. 
Um, mm. They're about halfway done. You can see they're still shiny, not brown, but they're starting to puff up and they're starting to smell really good. We'll see what they look like just at the end of the session. They may not quite be done yet. Here's our studio audience, yay! <laughs> Right. Okay. So here's where I need um, a, a servant to come and clean up my kitchen for me, but I think we'll eat a lot of what's here. Um, that's my presentation, but I'm so happy to answer any questions that people might have. I have one question. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. What's your oh, question? yes. Hi. Thank you very much for your delicious and uh, it looks easy to make it. It's so uh, healthy. And I love the way you, um, it, it, you know, uh, I squeeze my lime and lemon by hand. And it always hurt my hands later. And the way you use your fork, that's a really clever way of, uh, you know, extracting that uh, that juice out. Um, thank you for, uh, uh, for listening. Now, my question is, where do you find to buy that? Because um, I always scrape um, it uh, from my cutting board with my knife. Where do you find to buy that white? Um, is it a Looney store or do you buy it Save On Food? Yeah, where's the? What is that thing called? And and how much is it? This one I got from Pampered Chef a long time ago, but that's not the only place. It's called the name of it is called a bench scraper. So any cook shop will have it. There is a cooking store on um, Hastings Street near Beta Street um, in North Burnaby. They'll have bench scrapers there. Um, Street, okay. Yeah, you could, if you uh, go on, if you go online, go if you are an Amazon shopper, go online no, and yeah. Thank you for letting me know. I don't drive. Yeah. And, and I don't do Amazon uh, shopper too, but at least I know, you know, uh, uh, it's quite convenient to have a bench scraper. Yep. Is that bench plastic? Scraper. This one is plastic. They usually though, usually they're made out of metal. Usually they're aluminum and um, they look a little different from this, but they're just, they're the same idea. They're flat and you just scrape, move things around with them. So yeah. that's something to have. If, you're at, if people are saying, what do you want for Christmas? Tell them you want a bench scraper because it's it's only a few dollars and um, then you've got a new tool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Because Thank I've you. seen something of that on TV where it's sort of a metal and then you just scrape it off. Yeah. But if I continually do it uh, with my knife, do you think that will uh, uh, reduce the sharpness of my knife later? It's just less space. So here's, here's a trick. If you have to use your knife, use the back of your knife not the sharp part of your knife. So oh. flip your knife over and then, and then use yeah. the part of your knife that's not, not sharp to move things. Oh, what wow, yes, yeah. I never thought of that. A knife has two aspects to it, how sharp it is. And also, yeah, but it also on the sharp edge, it has a like almost mic microscopically thin edge. And when you use it to scrape, that edge gets bent one way or another. So your knife doesn't cut straight down anymore. The sharp part of it is pointing off to the left or pointing off to the right. That's why you can use um, sometimes a tool that just lines the sharpness of your knife up again without actually sharpening it. So, so that's what you want to avoid. So just use the back part, the harmless part of your knife to scrape if you don't have a bench scraper. Yes. Okay. Um, well, uh, thank you very much for saying that. And and and, and Sue, you you um, may I call you Sue? Uh... So yes, uh, earlier you've mentioned you, you've talked too fast, so I, I didn't really understand what what you've meant um, in terms of because uh, I've always used the sharpness of the knife to scrape things off, and then you know, uh, and then my, my knife needs sharpening because it says, "Well, will that dull my knife?" And then you said something in 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 uh, it was too fast for me, but 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 what did you say before you know um, uh, switching to the other side? So if I use the sharp knife. I, I can't remember what you've just said. Would you please repeat that? Thank you. So oh, if you use the sharp side of the knife, it'll make the sharpness of your knife crooked. Oh, yeah. It'll be like the sharp part of your knife. If you look at it under a microscope, it's going to be leaning to the left or leaning to the right. So then when you try to cut straight up and down with it, it's not going to work as well. I see. Yes, yes. Okay, the crooked, that, that's right. It hasn't happened to my knife, but but thank you for mentioning that. All right, wow. 
Um, so th that's it. So thank you very much for for your uh, your your your, uh, your your positive attitude and and uh, healthy cooking things like that. So I'm so happy that uh, you know uh, I'm sure it smells great there. So I'll be quiet. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Thanks for the great questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we've got five more minutes. Do you want to go back and have a look at the oven again? Three minutes. Three minutes. We're going to go back and look at the oven again. Beginning to puff up. They, especially the spinach ones, are really puffing a lot, but they're not done. They have to get quite golden, and I have to be sure they're cooked through to the middle. So probably about five minutes more, we'll do the trick. And if you try it, and the first time you make it, it's a little overcooked or a little undercooked, it's all good. The next time you do it, you can refine your technique. So any other questions before we wind up our session? I yes. have one more question. May I ask one more question? Melissa, can, can I, I ask any? mine? Can I ask sure, mine sure. before you first, Sheena? Can Gina, I ask please, mine? sorry. Yes. Um, so, Sue, the gourmet warehouse on Hastings has, a, yeah. if you're concerned about your knives, has a very inexpensive knife sharpener um, that aligns because, you know, I've, I've tried keeping it sharp with a steel, which I got with my knife set. But frankly, this this is much easier and a lot cheaper than having an expensive knife set. So it's just a little handheld sharpener that you run the knife down through and it will get your knives super sharp and it's very inexpensive. Gourmet Warehouse, Hasting Street. Great, well, I already, have a, I already have a bench scraper, so now I know what to ask for for Christmas. I want a knife sharpener from the Gourmet Warehouse. Thank you very much, that's a wonderful tip. I've always taken my knives out to get them sharpened, but it'd be great if I could do it at home. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Janice, and, and thank you for the information. Um, so, um, right. Um, uh, um, you, you, you put a lot of eggs there. Um, what happens? Um, I've, I've heard that um, um, eating too much eggs are um, bad for me. So I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, uh, what, what do you think? Do you well, think I, I if I put like four eggs and milk? Uh, maybe that would mush it up. Well, I'm saying I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't say, and I can't talk for individual people. But there are, okay. um, you could check. I think there's still dial a dietitian that you could call um, or ask your doctor next time about eggs. I think my, my feeling is that eggs are a villain food that is no longer a villain food. At some time or other, we were told that eggs aren't healthy for you. But I think they probably are, as long as we eat in moderation. Like I wouldn't eat twelve. Um, so, but but that's good to ask a health professional or a nutritionist, and and get the answer that's specifically the right answer for you. Yes, uh, thank you. I think I, I heard from my mom and dad. You know, uh, I think that's maybe old news. Like if you're <laughs> eating uh, two eggs every day, you know, you're gonna you're gonna die early or something. I don't know how else to say. But it's best to ask you right, a dietitian or a doctor. Yeah, uh, thank you for your information. You're welcome. So, Melissa, I think we've run to the end of our time. I want to thank everybody for today. And I hope that you, you enjoy yourself in the kitchen, that you cook all the colors, that you're messy and delicious, and you really enjoy your food. Thank you.